<laughs> yeah. Mama can't say you this time, niggas. Is I'm back. You know, religious lead, that's why they call me ho. They get the smoke. It's me. It's me, nigga. You street dreaming. All you niggas living through me. I get you life when niggas was forgetting you, MC. I'm a legend. You should take a picture with me. You should be happy to be in my presence. I should charge with fee. I'm big dog. We're halfway through season seven, and this is where boys become men. The honeymoon is over, the early season shine has faded, and now the grind begins. Welcome to LA. Two teams enter this week winless trilogy, a squad with a storied past of success, this season being an outlier, and the killer threes. Captain Franklin Sessions isn't used to slow starts. A player that's built a reputation on putting defenders down. By Charlo. Oh! He just caught a body! My goodness! But standing in his way, the undefeated enemies. Frank Nitty wasn't backing down. He came out hot, showing off for the home crowd pushing the Killer Threes to an early advantage. Here's Nitty. Give me some fries with that shit! Frank Nitty! Putting on a show! But as the pressure mounted, frustrations boiled over between NBA legend Killer Threes coach Charles Oakley and leading scorer Dante Green. Look at this, Dante Green. Dante Green wants him to challenge the call. Charles Oakley doesn't. What they call the delay of game on Green? Yes. I'm not fucking with Green. You stop it, I'm not fucking with Green. You know what? You know what? The enemies? They've been here before. They smell blood in the water. And in the second half, they struck. Elijah Stewart led the charge, erupting for 22 points, crushing the Killer Three's hopes of a comeback. Yes! The defending champions remain unbeaten! Their playoff dreams, all but over. The rest, business as usual. Michael Beasley, cool under pressure, took down Joe Johnson and the triplets with a game winner for the ages. Game point coming, no one has it, done it yet, and no one can! Game winner, Mike Beasley! Bivouac, efficient and ruthless, dispatching the ball hogs without breaking a sweat. And then there's Trilogy. I definitely am a little surprised with Trilogy. You know, that, that's that been like our, our best team for years now. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's rough. It's a rough start for them. Finally breaking into the win column, Isaiah Briscoe turned in another spectacular performance. Maybe he's trying to tell the league something. There's a new star rising. Steps back, it's up. There it is. Trilogy with the first win. About fucking time, bro. About time. I, I, the win is cool. I'm happy for the win, but right now it's kind of hard for me to enjoy it. As week five closes, the MVP race is starting to take shape, and it's not just the usual suspects. Garland Green, last season's solid contributor, this season's revelation. Stepping up in every way, providing his team with efficient scoring and defense that's been forged in the weight room and on the court. Green's game is rising, and so are his MVP chances. Nine point lead for Bivouac. Then there's Jeremy Pargo, the four point specialist and human highlight reel. On pace to shatter the league record from four point land, 
Pargo's range is limitless and his impact undeniable. Corey Brewer, more than just a two-way player, he's a symphony of offense and defense. Every move calculated, every play executed to perfection. Fade away. Spin, fade, got it! Jordan Crawford, because that's what he does. The reigning king, leading scorer, and the heartbeat of the enemies. Crawford's name isn't just in the MVP conversation, it's etched at the top. Here's Crawford. Spin, got in the lane, and scores. But Michael Beasley is his competition as the season wears on. An absolute terror on the court. A nightmare for defenders, controlling the game from every angle. Halfway through the season, the stakes have never been higher. The contenders are separating from the pretenders, and the bodies of eliminated teams would begin to pile up. It's kill or be killed as we head to Portland.